Let's continue with the Aqidah of Ibn Asakir. We just read a few lines last time, so we can start from the beginning. Qala Shaykh Fakhruddin ibn Asakir rahimahullah. Shaykh Fakhruddin ibn Asakir, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, I'lam, know, have knowledge. Arshadana Allah wa iyyak. May Allah guide us and you. Annahu yajibu ala kulli mukallaf. Here, where he says, Arshadana Allah wa iyyak. May Allah guide us and you. That is a dua interjected. So there was a sentence. And then the author broke that sentence apart to squeeze inside of it a dua. So he says, no, may Allah guide us in you. That obligatory upon everyone accountable is such and such. Is an ya'lama anna Allah azza wa jalla wahidun fi mulki is knowing that Allah, invincible and great, is unique in His dominion. خَلَقَ الْعَالَمَ بِأَثْرِهِ He created the universe in its entirety. الْعُلْوِيَّ وَالسُّفْلِي The upper and the lower of the universe. وَالْعَرْشَ وَالْكُرْسِي And the arsh and the kursi. So just for clarity here, the Arsh is over paradise, the ceiling of paradise. And the Arsh is also over the Kursi. So the Kursi is under the Arsh. So then there's two things, over the seventh heaven, under the Arsh. Al-Kursi and Al-Jannah. That's the synopsis of what we mentioned last time. Wasamawati wal ard. I thought I'd fix that. And the heavens and the earth. Wama fihima wama bainahuma. And anything in them. Or between them. Anything in heavens and earth. And anything between them. So we spoke about all that last week. He said, "Jamiul الخلائق مقهورون بقدرته All creations are subjugated by his power. Jamiul الخلائق All creations or all of the creations are مقهورون Subjugated Conquered because he is Al-Qahir, the subduer, the conqueror, or the dominator. And so the creations are Maqhurun, dominated, subjugated. And he is also Al-Qahar, that also means dominator, subjugator, conqueror. But it's more emphatic. And this is the weighty meaning of al-istiwa. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arsh istawa. Ar-Rahman over the Arsh istawa. A qahar meaning subjugated. He, he overcame the Arsh. That is... He subjugated it. He conquered it. And if he overcame the largest of creations, then means he subjugated and conquered and dominated whatever smaller. La illa bi Not a speck moves, but by his permission. Dharra could be the small red ant. 
or it could be the dust particle. That's what a speck would be. Yani, that's more in line with what's translated here. If darra here is speck, then that means it's the dust particle. The one that we can see when the sun shines through the window. La tataharraku dharratun illa bi'ivni. Not a speck moves, but by his permission. By his permission means by his will. Or it could mean by his command. His permission could refer to his will and his permission could refer to his speech. And even some scholars said could refer to his knowledge. Some said by his permission means by his knowledge. And some said means by his will. And some said means by his command. He does not have an assistant manager for the creation. Laysa ma'hu, there is not with him mudabbirun, a manager. So that's going to be then, the meaning here is an assistant manager. Fil khalq, in the creation, or it's translated here, for the creation. And possibly that means he does not have an assistant manager in creating. Wala sharikun fil mulk nor a partner in the dominion. Hayyun Qayyum Alive Qayyum Qayyum is not translated here because this word is open to broad interpretation. But all of that goes back to the same thing. So, Al-Qayyum could mean the one with confirmed existence. Or it could mean the one who's everlasting. Or it could mean the one who manages everything. Or it could mean the one who does not need anything. So, I think Qayyum means God. For Allah Ta'ala. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wala naum. Not taken by drowsiness or sleep. The drowsiness is when one starts to nod, but he can still hear what's going on around him. And the sleep is when his mind faints. That's for other than prophets. The mind faints and one does not hear what goes on around him. And one also would go limp. Yani, he doesn't feel anything is what I mean to say. He is not taken by somnolence. That means sleepiness, drowsiness, before actually being sleep. Nor by sleep itself. And that's refutation of Jews and Christians, as you know. Well, the Jews, they said that after he created heavens and earth, he rested on his back. And the Christians said he rested. The Jews said, He laid back. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى those people are mushabbiha or atheists this way or that way some jews are pagans mushabbiha god comparers and others are atheists alimul ghaibi wa shahada knower of the unseen and of the evident Knower of the unseen. The unseen is what our senses do not detect. 
like the angels and paradise and hell and the enjoyment of the grave and the torture of the grave and the future and the past. Allah is knower of all of the unseen. We say Allah is knower of the unseen. We don't say about someone else. Alimul Ghaib, knower of the unseen. That's correct, but that doesn't mean that no one knows anything of the unseen but God. There are creations that know some of the unseen, but we're not going to call them knowers of the unseen. Prophets, they know whatever Allah revealed to them, and they know that whatever is unseen amongst that, they know it with definitive correctness. The angels also know some of the unseen, and they know that with definitive correctness. And some of the saints might know some of the unseen but not with definitive correctness. Like a saint might say, such and such will happen to you. And then he might be right, or he might be wrong. Alimul ghaybi wa shahada. Knower of the unseen and of the evident. And he knows what's in our hearts also. He knows what we have hidden in our chests. لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء. Nothing on earth or in the sky is hidden from him. يعلم ما في البر والبحر. He knows what is on land and at sea. وَمَا تَسْقُطُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا And no leaf falls. Not a leaf falls, but that he knows it. وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ Nor is there a seed within the darknesses of the earth. وَلَا رَطُبِ Nor a thing moist. وَلَا يَابِثِ Nor a thing dry. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ But that it is in a clear record. يعني it is documented in a clear record. And these words in this Manual were taken from Surah Al-An'am. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَا تَسْكُتُ مِنْ وَرَقَةٍ إِلَّا يَعْلَمُهَا وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا حَبَّةٍ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا رَطُبٍ وَلَا يَابِسٍ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Subhanallah, I didn't used to know that this part of the text was taken from an ayah. And this part of the text was always my very favorite part of the text. I said to myself, Subhanallah, that part right there, the author of this metan, said very nice words out of everything. <laughs> he encompasses everything in knowledge. And he encompasses everything in count. And so that proves that there are indivisible atoms. Because if there weren't indivisible atoms, then he would not know the number of particles that things are made of. Because there wouldn't be one. فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ 
doer of whatever he wills. Fa'al is an emphatic form of fa'il. Fa'il means doer. Fa'al, it means fa'il, doer, but it's hyperbolic. So when we translate it as doer, it lost some of the meaning, really. Because the emphasis that exists in this adjective doesn't translate. The, adge the, the emphasis itself doesn't translate. Because the emphasis is in the pattern. Fa'alu lima yurid. Doer of whatever he wills. Uh, what does doer mean? Doer means creator for Allah. God's doing something is his creating it. His fi'l doing is his khalq creating. That's the way the Maturidis talk. Fa'alu lima yurid, doer of whatever he wills. But according to the Ash'aris, this refers to his being attributed with power. His being a doer refers to his being attributed with power. Power over creating or power over creation. Whatever he wills, he has power over it. His power is his attribute by which he makes something exist or not, yani, or go out of existence. His power is his attribute by which he brings something from nothingness. And by which he could reduce something to nothing. And his will is his attribute by which he makes one thing one possible way or another. By, way he, by which he makes something one possible way or another. His will is his attribute by which he makes something one possible way or another. Or in other words, his will is his attribute by which he specifies. So if you want to take that definition there, say it that way. His will is his attribute by which he specifies. Or his will is his attribute by which he makes something one possible way or another. His power is his attribute by which he brings something from nothingness. Or reduces something to nothing. Those two things don't mean the same thing exactly. Well, if you want, say it the way you take it. And then and then after you take it, after you say it the way you take it, and then you memorize it, and you convey like you took, then sometimes maybe you'll find other ways to say something. Because these definitions, I'm telling you, they're not making them up. This is what we learned it. So his will is his attribute by which he makes something one way or another. One possible way or another. Or another, in other words, you could say, his will is his attribute by which he specifies. That's it, period. His power is his attribute by which he makes something from nothingness. Or by which he reduces something to nothing. That's how the Ash'aris talk. Yani, another way to say my answer to you is if a person learns a definition, then he doesn't have to think of another way to say it. He can say it the way he learned it. Uh, not reducing from nothingness, reducing to nothingness. His power is his attribute by which he makes something from nothingness and reduces something to nothing. Or reduces it to nothingness. That means he destroys it. He makes it not exist anymore. I mean, what So, fa'al, doer, 
that's an adjective also, like we said. So that's why it's translated here, doer. So in some other translations, probably says, he does. So that's a verb. That would be translating fa'al as a verb. He does. But means doer. A doer. But it's hyperbolic. Lima yurid of whatever he wills. Qadirun ala ma yasha. Powerful over whatever he wills. So he used here the two words for will. You read the verb. He wills. This verb comes from irada, will. And he said, yasha, he wills. And this verb comes from mashia, will. Doer of what he wills, powerful over what he wills. Qadir, that's also adjective. Powerful over what he wills. So, that means... That means... Whatever his power is related to, his will is related to. His will pertains to what his power pertains. What does his... Yani, to what does his power pertain? His power pertains to anything possible. To what does his will pertain? His will pertains to anything possible. Well, what's the difference between them? His power is his attribute by which he makes something from nothingness. And reduces something to nothingness. And his will is his attribute by which he makes something one possible way or another. Meaning that he specifies it. Lahul mulku wa lahul ghina. Ownership is his. Lahul mulk. That's his eternal attribute. Wa lahul ghina. And the needlessness is his. Al-Ghina, that's one of his attributes also. He is Al-Ghani. This means that he's attributed with Istighna. Istighna is needlessness. Walahu al-Izzu al And he has the Izz, the nobility, yani, the perfection. Walbaqa, and he has the everlastingness. The everlastingness is his existence not ceasing. But that doesn't imply that his existence started, nor does it imply that he exists in time. His everlastingness is his not ceasing to exist. Because everlastingness means remaining. He remains yani, without a place though. He remains without a place. Walahu al-hukmu al And the ruling and creating are his. Al-hukum, the ruling. That means the judging. That means he makes lawful or unlawful as he wills. And he makes obligatory as he wills. Things are not obligatory or forbidden because of any morals. That's what's correct. Things are obligatory or forbidden because that's what God commands. That's in the story of Al-Khadir. That's proven by the story of Al-Khadir. Because Al-Khadir, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, wanted to travel with him and learn from him. 
when he knew that this man knew what he didn't know. And this doesn't negate that Moses is generally and broadly more knowledgeable than Al-Khadir. But that fact also doesn't negate that Al-Khadir could know something in particular better than Moses. Which was the case. So Moses wanted to learn from him. And Al-Khadir warned him and told him, you will not be able to be patient with me. But Musa insisted. And Al-Khadir let him accompany him under the condition that he does not ask him about what he does until he's ready to tell him. So they went and they got on a ship and Musa saw Al-Khadir pull a plank out of that ship. He breached the hull. So Musa being knowledgeable about the actions of the slaves, he saw this as damaging someone's property. That's haram. So he questioned them about it. So Al-Khadir told him, didn't I tell you you won't be able to be patient with me? So then Musa fell back and Al-Khadir by a miracle replaced that plank and then they went on and they encountered a boy, a prepubescent boy and Al-Khadir killed him. Musa said to him, you killed someone who didn't kill anyone? That's haram. What he means is, this is the judgment of such an act. The action that you have just performed, the judgment that goes with this behavior is that that's haram. So he's saying to him, so what are you doing? How is this? So Al-Khadir told him, didn't I tell you you won't be able to be patient with me? And so Musa told him, if I ask you anything else, then part ways with me. So they went on, and then they came to a village. And they sought hospitality from the people of the village. But those people were mean people. And so they were not hospitable. They turned Musa and Al-Khadir away, alayhi salam so they didn't get from those people any food or lodging. And in that town, there was an enormous wall on the verge of collapsing. So Al-Khadir, by a miracle that he performed, he pushed that wall up single-handedly. Musa said to him, if you wanted, you could have taken a salary for that. So Al-Khadr said, this is where we part ways. Then when he wanted to go, Musa took him by the clothing and said, not before you explain to me what you did. So Al-Khadr told him, I will explain to you what you were unable to be patient with. And he told him, as for the ship, it belonged to some brothers who were semen each one of them had an ailment a different ailment and beyond the ship was an unjust tyrant who commandeers ships good ships so I broke their ship I put a defect in their ship so that when this tyrant comes past he will find their ship defective and leave them he said as for the boy he was very mischievous he would do lots of bad things and then because his parents loved him so much they would defend him when the people would complain but this one was very bad and had he grown up he would have taken his parents into kufr 
because they would have followed him because of how much they loved him. Yeah, that's very interesting too. How Allah might give someone charisma even over his parents. Subhanallah. And so Allah Ta'ala willed to give them a more merciful child. Yani Allah gave them a daughter after that as it was reported. And as for the wall, it belonged to some orphans in the village. And beneath that wall was a treasure put there by their father, who was a pious man. Had that wall fallen, then their treasure would have been exposed and the people would have taken it. But your Lord willed to preserve their treasure for them so that they would grow up and then extract it. And then he said, وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي I did not do any of that from myself. So the point of my mentioning this story to you is to show you that if, for example, Allah gave the command to destroy someone's property, then that would not be haram. If Allah gave the command to take someone's life, then that would not be haram. The lawful is lawful because Allah made it so. And the unlawful is unlawful because Allah made it so, not because of our inclinations or because of morals. Does this story show the importance of fiqh? I haven't heard about this angle from the story. But this story proves what I just mentioned to you, and it also proves the issue of pending destiny. Pending destiny which is that Allah knows that if A happens, then such and such will happen. But if B happens, then such and such will happen. Because Al-Khadr told him, had I not broken their ship, then such and such would have happened. But since I broke it, then it didn't. And had I not killed this boy, then such and such would have happened. But since I killed him, then it didn't. And had I not pushed up the wall, then such and such would have happened. But I pushed it up, so it won't happen. So that's al-qadar al-mu'allaq. That's the meaning of any hadith that one might come across that he thinks it means that destiny changes. It doesn't mean that at all. But because this one is merely reading on his own and he hasn't learned, then that's what it means to him. So if you see a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever wants his life to be extended and whoever wants his sustenance to be increased, then let him do such and such. So one might say, life expanded. I thought we believe in the ajal, the appointed death time. That every single one has an appointed death time. Yeah, we do believe in that. Then how could someone's life be extended? Are you telling me that destiny changes? Absolutely not. Destiny doesn't change. The meaning of someone's life being extended is that Allah knows that if he, for example, stays in touch with his Muslim relatives, then, then he will live to be a hundred. And if he does not stay in touch with his Muslim relatives, then he would live to be 60 or 50 or 40, for example. Allah knows which one of those is really going to happen also. Allah knows that he might be one that does not stay in touch with his Muslim relatives and he's going to die in his 40s or 50s, definitively. But had he done otherwise, then Allah knows it would be in the knowledge of Allah, for example, that he would have lived to be 100. So we don't know. So what do we do? 
So what we do is take the Prophet's advice, alayhi salatu wasalam. So then you say, okay, let me do this thing that the Prophet said. Perhaps my doing this is the reason for my appointed death time to be later than it would be had I not done it in the knowledge of God, that is. Because it's only going to be one outcome. Who was Al-Khadir? Al-Khadir was a prophet who's uh, older than Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And he's still alive according to some of the people of the prophetic way. So it was said that, well for sure it's confirmed in the Quran that Musa encountered this man. And it was said also that Dhul Qarnayn encountered this man. Prophet Muhammad too was reported about him that he encountered this man. And scholars from Ahlu Sunnah and pious men have encountered him. Yes. May Allah enable you to see him. If you see him, that means you're a pious man. No one sees him but, but the pious. It was said that uh, Shaykh Abdullah was asked about Al-Bukhari. He said, Al-Bukhari said that Al-Khadir died. So Al-Bukhari, yani, is a massive imam. So the Shaykh was asked, what do you say about Al-Bukhari's position that Al-Khadir died? So what I know that the Shaykh said, perhaps he never met him. So that's a way of saying he didn't die. <laughs> Subhanallah. وَلَهُ الْحُكْمُ وَالْقَضَاءُ And the ruling is his. And the qada is his. The qada could be the creating. Uh, creating means bringing from nothingness into being. Bringing something from nothingness. That's creating. And Al-Qadha could refer to the destining. And the meaning of destining is arranging and managing. That means making everything come out with its measure. وَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى and the best names are his. But I say, let's stop here for tonight, mashallah. So we could talk a little bit about these names next time. And maybe read all of the 99 names. Maybe we can read them and take them, inshallah. Do you have any question I can answer for you? <laughs>